Okay, right. <laughs> the boiler's done. So what am I going to do next? Well, my next job is I'm going to remove uh, the engine frames from the base. Now, they're riveted on. There's three small rivets that hold the uh, hold the frames on. <clears throat> and um, the simple way to do it, to do this is to simply drill the heads off. Um, and, um, of course, a lot of you might be thinking, well, immediately we'll reach for one of these. Um, I would advise against using this. You don't want to damage the base, and, and it's all too easy for that thing to um, skid off the rivet head. So I would say use one of these. Now these are extremely useful bits of kit, um, and you've got much more fine control over this. So basically, you just—I've uh, chosen a 964 uh, drill bit. This is slightly smaller than the head because we don't want to damage the hole, um, and then very gently. Just drill the head off. Now, sometimes, as is happening there, the rivet will simply uh, rotate. It's just spinning, it's not actually drilling it. So, these are very, very uh, basic rivets. So, what you can quite often do is take an appropriate sized uh, pin punch like that, and uh, it will just tap out. going to sit straight. Yeah, like that. Comes out quite easy. And uh, we'll do the same for the for the other one. Sometimes they'll drill out. Sometimes they'll just spin like that. Depends on how tight they are. Now that's going to be awkward. So we'll, just, we'll just tap those out. They should come out fairly easy. There you go, job done. No mess, no fuss. Um, I don't know what possessed them to paint these red, because obviously they, that's what they should be. They should be that uh, mammoth, uh, apple green colour. Uh, there you go. Okay, well this is now ready along with the firebox for paint stripping. So that's the next lovely job. Okay, <laughs> paint stripping. Well, there's lots of ways you can go about doing this, but unfortunately it's nowhere near as easy as it once was. Um, many years ago, all you need to do was go down to your local hardware store, buy a paint stripper, and away you go. Pretty much take off anything. Unfortunately, our health and safety overlords have decreed that uh, there's all sorts of stuff we, as mere mortals, are not allowed to have access to. So now, the paint stripper that you buy in hardware stores is about as useful as a can of water. So, there are various methods that you, you, you can try, and I thought we'd have a have a go with one of the ones that can sometimes have a bit of success so basically in this container here what we have <coughs> is um the engine rails which i uh, previously um took the rivets out of to remove them from the base and they've been soaking in which is basically what is basically white spirit ordinary white spirit for about uh I don't know, day and a half now. Um, as you can see, it's turned red, so therefore obviously some of the paint's come off. I did actually give them a bit of a brush over with a wire brush at one point, but um, that was all I did. So we'll pull them out and have a look at what, what, what sort of state they're in. Yeah, well, I think, um, yeah, as you can see, uh, pretty much most of the red uh, paint has come off, leaving the um, original uh, mammoth apple green, which was what it should have been in the first place. And obviously whoever painted these didn't even bother to rub them down or try and get the paint off. Um, the, the the white spirit, this, yeah, I mean, it's it certainly hasn't really affected any of the... Um, 
any of the original mammoth green paint but i didn't really think it would do because that's been on there for many many years and hopefully would have been put on correctly in the first place unlike the red paint uh, let's put the other one Yeah, there you go. Again, this is in much the same condition. Most of the red paint has come off. Um, but um, So that, that was reasonably successful. I mean, it has actually taken some of the paint off and you can see what colour it it you know it was underneath and what it's supposed to be. Um, but um, that, will then go, that will now go into the Grip Blaster uh, to get the original uh, uh, Mammoth paint off. Um, so yeah, so that, that can have mixed results. It depends on uh, what kind of paint obviously was put on in the first place um, but what we're gonna I'm gonna show you next uh, is that I happen to have a can of um, very 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 old Nitromores paint stripper and this was when it was actually quite useful and I'll uh, show you that I haven't got much left unfortunately so we, we, we can only just do a demo of, of that really on a, we'll do it on part of the base plate but you can see how that works too um, but uh, no, unfortunately, I think um, for the vast majority of the base plate and the firebox, that, that will all have to be done in the grip blaster. So there you go. <coughs> okay, here we have one extremely old can of nitro wars, as you can tell by the fact that the can's all rusty. It's, I God, this could be up to 10 years old, I don't know. There's very little left inside it now, but I thought we'd use it to have a go at the flywheel and the, and the cranks because um, there might just be enough in there for for uh, for that or maybe not <laughs> I don't know there is a little bit left right. uh, it's brown because it's basically um, eating into the can from the um, from the inside so it's making the can get rusty um, <laughs> um, so th this really is horrible stuff but it it works. That's the difference between this and the, and the modern modern version. This will uh, this will actually, I think, take the paint off. So you're supposed to use this in a well ventilated area because it does stink. Um, no two ways about it. Um, you should also use gloves with it, really, but I can't be asked. I've never had it burn my hands, but um, I do say that you should be uh, aware that it can do that. So. So we'll see what it does, but um, I think we'll find that this will actually work. I say it's a filthy job, but uh, there you go. So we'll leave that on there, let it do its job for a minute. Okay, well that's been on for about five minutes and <clears throat> we really haven't got enough of it, but you can see, um, if I pick this up, uh, the effect it's actually having on the paint, you know, it is actually bringing the paint off literally pulling it right off and that's what paint stripper should do but of course modern paint stripper doesn't do that um, so it unfortunately it dries up really quick which is why you would really need a lot more of it than I've actually got left in the can so um, but we'll wash that off and, and it will have got most of it off so okay well I've given it a wash off with some hot water and I think you can see that um, there's still a little bit of paint left on there, but I mean that's what paint strip strip is supposed to do. You know, it should it should come up. And if we had enough of that stuff, it probably would have taken most of it off. As it is, I can probably get the rest of this off. I probably won't even have to bother putting this in the uh, grip blaster. I can just go over it with a uh, um, a Dremel type tool with a with a wire brush, and that will probably get the, this will flake off this you know rest of it. Um, there's the one of the cranks. You see, it's still got a bit of paint on it. But as I said, I could clean those up with a drum and a wire brush and they'll be done. Um, unfortunately, um, <laughs> as I said, the um, the base plate and the firebox 
Um, it's very unlikely that even good paint stripper would touch the firebox because it's um, it's been baked on uh, over some time. So they're going to have to go in the grip blaster. So that'll be the next stage. <clears throat> okay. Well, I've uh, spent about uh, sorry, five to ten minutes cleaning that up with a uh, rot rotary tool and wire brush, and then I'll uh, put it in an arbor stuck it on the lathe and uh, finished it off with a bit of emery cloth and that's come up quite nicely uh, we also discovered another problem uh, <laughs> the um, 6BA screw was stripped that holds it on so I've had to re-tap that um, 4BA and I'll show you how I did that in a minute um, these are the cranks also came up very nicely um, where's the other one? there we go Just looking at the camera and not what I'm picking up um, so yeah, so that's that. That's pretty much done. That's ready for repainting. Um, a little word about these rotary tools. Um, I used to have a Dremel. I paid quite a lot of money for it, uh, and I think it lasted about just over a year, just out of warranty before the speed controller burnt out. And I was having an hour about buying another one, and then um, a very good friend of mine uh, gave me this as a as a birthday present. Thank you very much, Tina. And I've had this for, I don't know, a good three or four years now. And I have no idea what make this is, but it's been absolutely brilliant. You know, and um, yet the Dremel, which is supposed to be, you know, top-notch make. Yeah, there you go. So it's it's quite bizarre. But what you will need to do is get yourself, if you're going to do go down this road, and I thoroughly recommend using those. They're brilliant for getting into little bits like this. Um, you need to buy yourself a bucket load of these. Okay, because the, you you will wear these out fairly quickly. You know, I use the the, the sort of um, conical shaped wire brush and the round round shape uh, wire brush, and I I, always, I get through quite a lot of these. But but these are actually these aren't very very expensive at all. Um, so yeah, so that's that's all done. I'll just show you quickly how I went about re 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 tapping this hole in the uh, in the flywheel. So okay, now you don't absolutely need a lathe to do this particular little job but 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 if you've got one it just makes life so much easier and and this is a, a recent investment of mine this is a warco wm 180 uh, lathe um and it, it just makes life a lot easier i mean you can do this little job in um in a normal bench vice but anyway we'll i'll show you what i'm going to do with this um we've got to retap this the uh we've got to retap the flywheel um fixing because it's stripped so the lathe is off, obviously. Um, you simply mount the flywheel, grip it by the rear boss there, and that holds it superbly. Um, let's just see if we can get a better picture of that. Yeah. Then you use a, I've got a, I've got a 4BA tap here and a standard sort of small tap holder. And then basically, you just go in like this. Now bear in mind I've already done this, so this is just going to wind in quite easily. But it, the, the, having the lathe, it just makes uh, life so, so much, so much, so much easier. Um, and um, anyway, that's how you do it, and that's that's how I did it. Um, like I said, you could you could put the flywheel in a in a bench vice and, and do it that way, but um, it, it, it's much easier to hold it using the, using the lathe chuck, and also it's less likely to damage it. So, so that's the flywheel. Um, Retapped and it's now ready to be re be painted.